All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. Let's have that discussion on the 844 system and whether it has served its purpose or not since 1985. And now the transition is officially here. The results are out. That will be the final results for the 844 system. My guest already with me in studio, Honorable Wilson Sosion, former NAT Secretary General, also nominated MP, also a member of the Education Committee. Thank you for making time. Honorable Nabi Nabuera is here, member of Parliament for Lugari and a member of the Education Committee as well. Thank you very much for making time. Dr. Mary Chepkemoi, researcher Zizi Afrik is also with us, Asante Sana for making time, and Emos Kaburu, Chief Consul Optica. Thank you very much for making time. And Honorable Sosion, I'll start with you on this. Did the 844 serve its purpose? Yeah, 844 was one of the most well thought out revolutionary education curriculum in Africa that actually was going to be a panacea to lead Africa to industrialization. But it was systematically supported uh, by external forces. Uh, if you look at the model of education in Africa, it doesn't, no country in Africa can be proud of having an education system that has led to industrialization. And industrialization means taking over opportunities of the global north and, and the <coughs> west. We've not broken away the way Asia have done. Asia broke away from this yoke of uh, control from the west and uh, they, they, they intensified their investment in STEM education. Mm -hmm. And that STEM education has made them what it is. Don't ask why Singapore is Singapore what it is now, why South Korea is what it is, why Malaysia is what it is. Uh, it is basically the education system. 844 was meant to achieve that. And at the time 844 was established, we were relying on the, on the West in terms of donation, we relied so much on Europe, we relied on IMF and World Bank. And uh, 844 was supposed to be a skill-based education system and to churn out self-reliant, innovative, creative, skilled citizens. That is what it was. And uh, it was interfered by Kamunga report of, the, uh, of 1988, mm -hmm. Education and Power, Manpower Development, for next decade and beyond, yeah. which brought in the issue of funding mm. and, uh, and, and uh, cost sharing with families. And that completely affected yeah. the funding of 844. The, the, the ticket of David Coyage tried to rectify that and recommended a lot of investment in, in, uh, in education. Mm -hmm. But uh, the ticket report was fought by private school owners yeah. vigorously until uh, it was set aside, it was never implemented. Okay. Nevertheless, what remained with the 844 yeah. was a strong knowledge uh, framework. And the strong knowledge framework is what has made 844 and even the graduates the most competitive in the world. And it is wrong, I dare tell Kenyans, it is wrong to condemn 844 that it was merely exam oriented uh, that is what was uh, that is what was ingrained in 844. Mm -hmm. A very good education system will have a strong examination system, okay. and that is why the products of 844 they've scored first class in Ivy League universities. Yeah. They are competitive in the world, and for me, yeah. we, we we really would need an, an a, a proper exit. Uh, summative evaluation report of 844. I would say it is among all the education models that Kenya has developed. Okay. 844 was the best, the best. and uh, to me, I celebrate it okay. as okay. an educator. All right, let me bring in Honorable Nabi on this. Honorable Nabi, did, did 844 system serve its purpose or was it sabotage, like Mwishimua Sosioni is saying? Uh, yes, um, up to where we are, yeah. uh, it has done it, its um, service to the country. Um, of course, with a lot of challenges. Um, I'm one fellow who begrudgingly mm. have let it go. I, I still believe if we had implemented 844 as thought out in the McKay report yeah. uh, that set up the 844 system, Kenya would be 
in its own kind. We would not be looking for CBC because some of the things I see in the CBC were well thought out in 844, but uh, we failed to implement them. I keep on asking the question, even now, if we couldn't do it in 844, uh, by renaming them or calling them another, fashioning them differently, will we manage? Something uh, Socion has said, which is critical in the Kenyan education system, is that uh, no one is willing, mm -hmm. up to today, to invest enough money in education. Maybe because, uh, to a large extent, where we need to invest money is in the software, you know? Uh, where it's very difficult to cut a 10% deal, 15% uh, deal, 20% uh, deal. Mm. Uh, for example, uh, look at it. Up to today, I'm even going to the new uh, education system, I don't have 22 billion shillings uh, capitation money. Right? The question is, but we are increasing money in the funny infrastructure and but because these 22 uh, would, would be going into things that are very difficult mm. to get a deal. Uh, if you are to employ teachers, for example, you know, you just have to pay salary. No one will take 10% from a salary of a teacher. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you are to promote a teacher to a next level, yeah. you just have to promote the teacher and pay him there. No one will cut a deal. Mm. So it is true what Socion is saying that we failed to achieve the bigger objective of 844 because we refused to invest in it because the cartels in the education system in Kenya okay. are the sabotage the system. Mm. All right. But to where we are, it has served its purpose. Okay. Amos? Uh, first of all, I want to celebrate my birthday met, KCP, yeah. <laughs> or 844, sorry. <laughs> It was birth the same year I was born, yeah. so it is very nostalgic to think about uh, 844. I totally agree that we systematically, systemically, intentionally, unashamedly, we sabotaged 844. Very good intentions, very well thought out, but unfortunately we just lacked the will. Um, I don't know whether we lacked a champion, I don't know whether we what is basically, this is just something that we lost, and the tragedy is that it may befall again what we are going through. Mm. If we are not very careful. So history might repeat it down. Yeah, and, so, so, and, and that's the reason why we need, even on this set, some of very, very strong voices, like Socion's voices, mm. to still argue for some of these things. Because if we leave, um, education to run almost in an autopilot. I was in the same seat mentioning that I doubt if there is someone in charge of education in Kenya. Mm. Because if I walk into a public school, I walk into a private school, I speak to a policymaker from one end to another end, you speak to a researcher, there is a complete feel that there's no one who is in charge of education in this country. And that is the saddest thing. Because Education is such a salient social issue that everyone wants to participate in it. I mean, what will you do with your children at home from January to December if you don't send them to school? The tragedy becomes when it becomes a routine process as we've made it to be. So 844 had very good intentions. 844 was well thought out. Unfortunately, it was seriously sabotaged. Okay, Dr. Chifkemoe, I know you've done a lot of research in this area. Do you, did it serve its purpose or is it sabotage the way the panelists seem to argue? Thank you very much. And um, first also let me congratulate the class of uh, 2023. Yeah. And um, I would want to say that uh, 844 served its purpose. And I look at it from a historical perspective. Um, you know, before 844 we had the 7462 which was so much of, um, of a colonialist you know, kind, kind of a system. And um, when we came in with 844 system, uh, you know, the skilling and um, all that it was supposed to achieve 
really it was clearly you know well thought out and um, I agree that uh, this com the Mackay Commission really did so much even in terms of um, the recommendations that it made uh, the only um, disservice that happened is the lack of investment in this system of education. I am a product of the 844 system of education and uh, <clears throat> I look at um, the achievements and the kind of things that have come out as a result of the people who went through this system. And I think there's a lot that we can write home about. Um, the, the problem with the kind of uh, systems that we see, and again, I want to go to it in a historical way, is that if you look at countries that have prospered, if you look at countries in the world that have developed, they hardly change systems of education. Rather, they infuse, they integrate, they enhance those systems of education. So it's, it's not much about changing, it's um, looking at what we want to achieve in the current system of education and trying in as much as possible uh, to do what we need to do. Investing in the teachers, ensuring that the parents are on board yeah. and ensuring that everyone plays the role that they should be playing. Okay. Otherwise, 844 was a very good system of education. Yes, yeah, so when you say this was a skills-based curriculum, it was meant to be a skills-based curriculum, but what we're seeing is mostly just churning out people who have a max oriented. In fact, many people were asking me here earlier on when the, somebody took, was having a conversation that yes, one person got 428, 400 marks and above were 8,523 students, but there is another 2,060 students who in the same exam scored between one to 99. The philosophy of 844, as was uh, outlined in McKay report, and 844, by the way, was a byproduct of uh, the Presidential Working Party on the Second University of Science and Technology. That was the assignment. And uh, the Second University of Science and Technology was more university. Mm. That's why we have the wood science and technology and the rest. That was the master plan. But uh, in the process, it was agreed that was not going to be attainable unless the education system was remodeled for industrialization, for industrialization. And you remember, we even got what, what you call the Nyayo Pioneer. We are going to manufacture our own cars in the country, and it was going to work, and it was working. You remember in this country we had what was called Cameron when yeah. HIV and AIDS came in, because of we have knowledgeable intellectuals in this country. So. The ship from 7423, 7423 from the Ominde Commission of 1964 was to prepare Kenyans to produce civil servants who would work in offices. Correct. Because we were a freshly independent country and we didn't have such personnel. That was the intention of 844, to prepare Kenyans for the white collar jobs in offices. So we didn't prepare for industrialization. 844 was supposed to trigger the country to industrialization. And that is why skill-based subjects were introduced, the woodwork, the home science, agriculture, music. And you can see Kenya now, is it, music has remained within the 844 uh, framework and is one of the best done uh, aspect of the, of the curriculum. So really, 844 was supposed to strengthen STEM education, which people are now talking about it now, STEM, science, technology, <coughs> engineering, and mathematics. That was, the, <coughs> that, that was the intention. We had workshops in the primary schools, but were they equipped? Were they sustained? Did you train teachers in, in those different technical areas, the woodwork, the metal work, the power mechanics, the electricity, and the rest? Did we invest to train teachers over time and supply in all schools. We did not. We never prepared teachers. We never trained teachers. If anything, we succumbed to the pressures of the World Bank of structural adjustment programs to completely freeze recruitment of teachers and training of teachers. So uh, this country never invested in training of teachers in the technical areas massively and recruiting them. And uh, which is a problem that we have now. We are rolling out CBC. We've got <laughs> In grade seven, 
14 learning areas <clears throat> and pre-technical subjects offered in all schools. And there is not even a single teacher who has been trained. That's the truth. And these are things we were talking about. So we could be jumping from frying pan to the, real to the fire. fire. And that brings me to what uh, uh, Dr. Tari here has said in research. And that, uh, that is also my global experience, having led teachers uh, continentally, globally, and locally for a long time. Integration of new aspects of any curriculum will ride on the existing curriculum. Yeah. CBC is not going to succeed unless it sits squarely on the stratum and the foundation of 844. That's a fact. So it's wrong to tell Kenyans that, oh, we've gotten rid of this system. We are bringing in a completely new CBC aspect is actually the components of 844. Okay. And when we were looking at the, the, the when, when, when we were discussing and the, and, and the president established the presidential working party, these are facts that were considered. If you look at one of the bullet, the review of Kenyan education system, appreciating the knowledge based, Kenya has mounted one of the best knowledge based education system. Though we missed out in investing in technology aspects in 844, but we remain with a knowledge based education uh, model. And uh, we, we are focusing on now strengthening the knowledge-based education system while integrating the 21st century skills, that is skill-based education, competency-based education, value-based education. And that is why, Kaburu, if you look at exit exams of, of, of grade 9, it will have 60% of summative, summative. exams. And <coughs> of as senior secondary, it will have uh, 70%. So I would say, Trevor, yeah. we are dealing with international cartels that do not want Africa to develop education models that produce engineers who are champions in manufacturing. We produce engineers yeah. who fear manufacturing, who shun, and who avoid, mm -hmm. who are building our roads now. They are the Chinese engineers, because we've, we've not encouraged our own domestic people. Now, as Kenya Kwanza, you're talking about investing in uh, manufacturing, value addition, and all that. We can't do it without having a robust STEM education system. In fact, I would rather we forget about this, uh, the, talking about CBCs being very simplistic. We are still retaining strong knowledge-based education system, even if as, as we shift from 844 structure. Yeah. We are integrating skills and competencies. Yeah. And therefore, this is an education that will require a lot of investment. Mm -hmm. If you look at the Presidential Working Party report, its recommendation and its models and directed investment areas, mm -hmm. it is going to correct this. But there is one tragedy that we can't, we can't avoid. We've not trained teachers to deliver in the different aspects. Yeah. And I wonder, I don't know the magic wand that will be, <laughs> that, that, that will be performed yeah. so that we can get those teachers overnight to teach skill-based subjects in grade seven, skill-based subjects across board. We don't have teachers. Okay. That's a fact. Okay. And, and the universities, the yeah. colleges are not prepared uh, to do all this. Of course, there are a lot of challenges, existing challenges yeah. that are fighting back, that do not want people to speak. Yeah. These deals, the people of deals and corruption and cartels and interest. That is what has affected. Okay. That is what is inhibiting yeah. free expression and continuous conversation okay. within, the, within the sector. And yes. of course, lack of accountability structures. Nabi is talking about putting more money. Is the money that we are already putting accountably used yeah. and optimally used to deliver quality and equitable learning to every child? Yeah. Those are fundamental That's questions fundamental we should question. we should ask. Both of you are in the education. When uh, I've always spoken, yeah. I've always spoken. Yeah. I'll yeah. continue speaking. Yeah. Uh, when you talk of uh, mm. now, we've rolled out JSS uh, in Grade Seven, and at the Ministry of Education, we don't have a monitoring and evaluation framework. Yeah the quality assurance st and standards is dead. It doesn't exist yeah. completely. So how are we monitoring implementation of a new curriculum? It would rather be dead when you already have a working education system. But here we are, we are introducing an education system. Yeah. We don't have monitoring and evaluation framework in okay. place. And we don't seem to be 
to, to be working uh, towards that direction. Then okay. finally, since yes. Chip Kemo is here, are we managing education using evidence-based research data? That is, we are also not doing that. So we are being more casual in rolling out CBC than when you are rolling out 844. Okay. So the outcome yeah. uh, is obvious what we will expect. I have to take a quick commercial break. When I come back, Nabi, I'll give you a chance to respond and also Amos and take more and talk about all the issues that Sosion has raised here. But we'd like to hear from you as well at Trevor Billiard, Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Daybreak. See you in just a bit.